The Fed sure. kicks off its latest policy meeting later today. Tomorrow, we will get the central bank's interest rate decision. Fed widely expected to hold things steady, but it could signal a willingness to tighten further in the months ahead. Joining us right now with his view is former Dallas Fed President Richard Fisher, who's also a senior advisor at Barclays and a CNBC contributor. And Richard, I think the big question is more how long the Fed is going to keep rates high, because as Steve Leisman was pointing out earlier in our surveys that we've done, people are now looking for a much longer, higher rate structure, and that could mean a lot of things for the economy, too. Well, Becky, I believe what's driving rates higher and will keep them high for longer is our fiscal policy. And going back to the discussion you just had with Steve uh, and Santelli, uh, the daily borrowing for the next 90 days as we go into this last quarter of the U.S. government, $8.66 billion a day. A day. Jeez. These numbers have gotten horrendously large. And if you look at the projections for the first quarter of next year that was released by the Treasury, they're even higher. So this is driving the rest of the yield curve. And the Fed, as Powell, I think, hinted very strongly in his speech at the uh, New York Economics Club, doesn't have to do much here. So uh, the curve is 5% plus all the way out to five years and it comes down. We saw the 10-year test the 5% level previously. I believe it's going to happen again. There's just no way you can clear this market uh, that is so heavily dependent on more issuance, more issuance, more issuance. That, that, this is a really interesting point, Richard. It just I, I was at that Economic Club of New York uh, speech for, of Powell's, too. And, you know, he, he left open the possibility that it could be a lot of things. But he did say that he thought part of it was the market kind of believing what the Fed was doing at this point. What you just said is very different. What you said is the Fed's basically lost control. This is fiscal policy gone wild. And, and, and now, you know, the market has taken over. Yeah, I don't think the Fed has lost control. And I am a big supporter, as you know, of what the Fed has done since they abandoned the transitory inflation argument. I think Powell's done a brilliant job. The committee has done a brilliant job. And, and you should know, by the end of today, that decision's already been made. They wait, they discuss it, they put the fine points around it tomorrow in the morning meeting of Wednesday. But pretty much when they go to bed this evening, they know what they're gonna announce. So uh, I think the Fed's in good shape here. It is not the Fed that is the problem, that's my point. It's the fiscal authorities that are out of control. And as long as that's the case, we're gonna live in a 5% world. But that's what more. I mean, it, fiscal authorities, you, if they're calling the shots at this point, and the market's reaction to that is calling the shots, then what can the Fed yeah. do? Well, that's true. They can work on the shortest end of the yield curve, and that's about it. So we'll just have everybody you've had on that I listened to earlier this morning, uh, TIA, Kraft, et cetera, they're all expecting to be focused on the fixed income sector, at least for the time being. That's keeping rates relatively low. If they weren't focused, they'd be much higher. So, Becky, I think, and, and to be fair to Janet Yellen and the comments that Steve just made, remember she said you should go big. What she meant was financing long. The trouble is the dealers don't want to finance long. Treasury actually talked about 50-year bonds when rates were low. But you can't get dealers to pick that stuff up. They don't want to be stuck with long duration. So let's be fair here. Okay, I, I, the 50 year, I understand. I know that I know that Mnuchin, when he was there at Treasury, looked at that for several years and considered it. I, I understand the argument that dealers don't want 50 year paper. Could you sell more 30 year paper? Uh, more 20 year 20, paper. 10 or 20 if you look year paper. At, if you look at the auction announcement that's already been made, Becky, there's much less going out at 10 years and they're still staying fairly short. Hmm. So the 10 year is the keynote globally. When it bops around 5%, it sends a shiver up the spine of the markets. And we saw that reaction. Now it's come back down to the 480-plus level. But be careful here, because I still think there's upside potential on the yield of the 10-year. And what I love, Becky, is we ought to go back and see who was so fretting about the 2- to 10-year spread and how it was saying recession is coming, recession is coming. You can go back almost a year and a half. And we ought to play a tape of those that were saying that was signaling recession. Right. We so, haven't had it yet. 
So, Richard, I think you're, you're making a similar point that Steve was, was trying to make as well. And so the question I would ask about the, the market for Treasuries, if, in fact, you were to try to issue more 30-year paper and less 10-year paper, what, what, would, what would happen? I ask because we will talk to Stan Druckenmiller about this tomorrow, and I'm so curious just how you think the market forces would behave as a result if, in fact, that had become the strategy. Well, first, Stan is one of the greats, so I'm going to listen to what he says tomorrow also. Um, the 30-year, the 20- and 30-year are really taken down by, mainly by insurance companies and those that have to match their long-term liabilities. I don't pay a lot of attention to that. I pay a lot of attention to the 10-year. It's the key market rate for the entire globe and the key currency for the entire globe, which is the U.S. dollar. And that's why there's so much focus on the 10-year. Everything gears off of it, of mortgage rates, et cetera. And I think that's what we should be watching, Andrew, the 10-year note. And again, it bopped up to five, sent a shiver up the spine of the marketplace. And I think some shrewd investors took it down at that rate. And we'll have to see how much appetite there is there. But do note, we'll see what they announce tomorrow. But thus far, well, what they've Why announced. couldn't Yellen could have bought a bunch of the 10-year, right? And it's, or could have sold a bunch of the 10-year, right? I would, I would suggest that they do that, but they could've. haven't. You look at the auction schedule, it's been the least amount is in the 10-year. We'll see what they announce tomorrow. Well, now it's too late. But the Richard, numbers, is there pushback, is there pushback on the 10-year, too? Or, I, I mean, I, I hadn't thought about the brokers and that aspect of it. You can't force the market to take it. I think if you do too much, then you're going to have a little bit of hiccup here. But, but again, they should have done more. We'll see what they do tomorrow. I'll bet you anything there's less in the 10-year space than there is at every other space. Well, back when off. you had a chance, Richard, so they don't want it, so you had to go up, you know, you had to go up from 80 basis points to 100 basis points. Now it's 500 basis points. Right. I mean, even if you did have to give them a little more, they could have done it. I, I, don't, I don't understand why you're saying... Or it's just the price, you right. You couldn't do it. You could have done it at a price, and it'd be a hell of a lot uh, cheaper than it is now. Than what I, we're stuck I with. agree fully, and Leesman, or somebody just made the point that at the interday low in 2020, the 10 year was right around 50 basis points. Imagine that. Today it's 10 wow. times that. And now, why did they do it that way? Or how did it happen? COVID. Remember, we had that scare that started in March of 2020. They would have been wonderful. And I, again, for Janet's credit, even though you guys are hypercritical, she did say, we need to go long. Go big, go long. Well, she couldn't sell it within the administration or elsewhere in the market. That would have been a brilliant time to do it. Again, 2020 hindsight. It's not, would it just be enabling the fiscal authorities to do even more? It's like everything they do is to enable course. these fiscal authorities to uh, here's continue an interesting to data spend. Point, Becky, in the next three years, over half of U.S. Treasury debt is going to have to be refinanced. And right now, it's carrying a Jeez. yield weight or a cost of carry in the 2 plus, almost 3% level. It's going to go to 5 or maybe higher. Well, I, maybe don't see how you can ar I don't see how anybody can argue that it, that it shouldn't have been extended. Now, so you said, well, you're saying the market. I think you pay a little more, the market would have, would have done it. You're saying the administration would not have gone along with it? I'm just saying it wasn't done. Someone decided not to do it. I don't know if it was the dealers. I don't know if it was the administration. But that's history. Now the issue is, how do you refinance the U.S. Treasury debt, which is massive? And again, we're going back to eight point six billion dollars a day in the next 90 days that's insane how do you how do you finance all this uh at lower rates that that's the puzzle that all of us are trying to solve 